Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport and the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Saskatchewan, you know SaskTel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With SaskTel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. SaskTel cares, always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the CBC GEM coverage of the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. It's also available on Sastel Curling Stadium on the YouTube channel. So we want to join. Thank you for joining us from wherever you happen to be watching. My name is Sean Joyce. I'm joined for this broadcast by Chris Heikert and uh, the final Pitts Silvani Terenzoni against Abby Ackland's team. These two teams came through the B event, so had to draw for Hammer before this game started. That was won by Terenzoni, so they've got last rock here in the first end, throwing the Yellowstones, and we're already underway. Chris, thanks for joining us here for this broadcast. You've been pulling double duty this weekend. Uh, you're also the manager of the Swift Curl Current Curling Club. That's right, Sean, and uh, good afternoon to everybody tuning in here as well. Doing a bit of double duty this weekend, uh, putting on this event here, and uh, it's been great all around. We've had uh, great success, great ice. Uh, we've really been happy with how the events unfolded and uh, wish good luck to these two top teams in the event. Did mention off the top, it was the Abby Ackland team that's playing, but uh, I guess we should point out not their full lineup they uh, they had to juggle a little bit to, to get four players here this weekend I've got uh, somebody at a wedding I believe I heard and another player away so Megan Walter who usually plays either second or third is actually skipping the team Sarah Oliver usually plays lead is throwing the second stones and they've got a couple of subs uh, Mackenzie Elias throwing the lead stones and it is Kelly Schaefer from right there in Swift Current throwing third stones for them yeah, you nailed that there, Sean. They've they've juggled things around this weekend due to other commitments, but uh, they've been able to field a team here, and what a team it's been. Well, it's worked out well for them. They're playing in the final. Hit and roll over there. Joe's just past the guard, so it's available for takeout attempt. This is Sarah Oliver. Sweeping for a little bit of extra curl if they can get it. Not enough to stay. Does remove the yellow stone from play. Terenzoni now look to peel that center guard. For Terenzoni. A new lineup this year after the Olympic cycle, but uh, the back end, Alina Pets throwing the last stones and Silvana Terenzoni playing third and throwing skip, or skipping and throwing third stones. That is unchanged from the last few years. They've got a new front end. This is Carol Howard, the second, and the lead, Briar Herleman. No, it's, uh, yeah, they got a bit of a new team this year. Silvana Terenzoni being one of the top skips in the world for several years now. Um, Briar Herleman, I believe she is now married to Schwaller, going with the last name Schwaller now. So Herleman, many of you may know her father, who was a great curler. Nothing in play. 
Megan Walter asking for the center guard. Bit of a clean, clean end here. Uh, do you typically see that, Sean, with these teams in the games you've commentated? Uh, fairly clean in the first end, or have most teams been getting right after it? I, I'll be honest, I've seen a number of clean ends. Now, that doesn't always mean that they end up clean. Sometimes you get a nose hit here or there, and we've even seen a couple of open flashes in the first end. So we've seen some deuces come out of nowhere. The other thing is you have to be careful. Uh, if you're Megan Walter here, you throw one too many guards, and so that Terranzoni will just go around it. Kelly Schaefer, the Southpaw, she's uh, she's playing third this weekend, and she'll also be playing third in a couple weeks up in Prince Albert. She is representing Saskatchewan in the mixed na team nationals in Prince Albert, November 6th to 12th. So she's using this event to tweak up for for that upcoming event. And I've I've heard that on that roster, she has to really carry the weight of the second. I, I figured that line was coming next, but uh, I'm you, quite excited. You set it up, didn't you? I'm quite excited. I get uh, the pleasure to play with Kelly, and uh, she's a heck of a third, heck of a curler, and uh, it shows how she can just jump on a team with uh, three other people you don't know, and they found themselves uh, in the final against a three-time world champion. So. Makes the hit, stays right there. Didn't see any indication from Megan if she wants the roll here. You hit that one on the nose, you won't be in the rings. Fairly open end here in the first end, and yeah, it appears teams are just going to feel each other out here. They, I believe, these two teams met up once before in the event, did they not? They did. Uh, Tiernan's only had had the buy in the first round. There were 28 teams in this event, so four teams didn't play in the first round. Abby Ackland won her first game, and these two teams played in Ackland's second game. Tiernan's only's first. Abby Ackland did that the Abby Ackland team uh, did come out with the win on that uh, occasion. Yeah, if my member memory serves me correctly, it was a six to five extra end win. So it was a it was a great battle, and I'm sure we're in store for this a similar sort of game here. That's impressive, Chris. That's all the way back to Thursday. <laughs> I can't remember if I tied my shoes this morning or not. It's been that kind of a week for me, but I assume they'd be loafers. <laughs> we kid, but I'm sure it's busy when you're... Uh, how involved were you with, with the event? Did you chair it or on the committee? You know what? Uh, there were there were several sure, people. Manager. Yeah, there were several people that helped out with uh, putting on this event. A um, lot of volunteers for ticket takers at the door. People who make the draw and the scheduling, and I can't say enough about the ice makers as well. Uh, it takes a huge team of ice makers to be able to turn over six sheets of ice in an hour, and uh, to have the ice at the quality that it is, which is just world class, right here inside the Swift Current Curling Club. So, enough can't be said about the team that we had and uh, the head ice maker here, Jason Broughton. Teams continuing to exchange hits here, and uh, it looks like there's going to be an opportunity for Tieran's only team to play for the blank. Good old-fashioned corn broom there to slide with, eh? What's left of it, yep. <laughs>
you pretty much know when you see a broom like that, it's going to be a tuck delivery as well. <laughs> Megan Walter with the hit. Cleaning it all the way down. She'll stay right there. So Lena Petz with her final stone will just look to hit and roll out. Blank this first in and keep Last Rock into the second. Just cleaning it all the way down. She does make the hit, rolls the shooter out of play. We've got a blank in the first. Terrence Oney will keep Last Rock when we come back for the second. and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport in the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Welcome back, second end already underway. First stone thrown to a tight guard position. So we see here, Silvana Tiranzoni retains the hammer into the second end. How it worked all weekend was the teams did draws to the button after their pregame practice. And the closest one to the button was able to have the hammer in the first end. Moving into these playoffs, it was the team with the better record or the fewer losses that got hammer throughout the playoffs. But seeing how that Team Ackland and Team Terenzoni both qualified through the B event with the same record, uh, they did a draw to the button before this game with Silvana Terenzoni coming slightly closer than Ackland and uh, getting that ever elusive hammer in the first end. Tell you a neat little stat we just drummed up here with regards to the hammer. Uh, Silvana Terenzoni this year is 23 and one when she starts the game with hammer. That's quite the stat. Room by the guard. Brings that stone into the top of the forefoot. It does get nice finish there. The uh, team Ackland there, they are got their center guard up and one wrapped around. They're going to look to steal here. Uh, their team is five and nine when starting the game without the hammer. Although stats give you an indication, um, it's a slippery game and it's played on ice and anything can happen. Looking to come down, sit on the corner of that stone. Rubs off just enough that uh, there's probably room to pass it through. Sarah Oliver being asked to make the hit. I didn't see an indication if they're looking necessarily for a roll here. Does make the hit, stays right there. And with that being the fifth stone of the end, they can start making plays on the guards. She's going to look to run back the red tight center guard. See. 
double the two out of the top of the forefoot. Just stuffs it back. That's unfortunate. Uh, you'd like to get something off the center line with that. You can see the brooms out towards the 12 foot. Uh, we've had excellent curl out on the ice all weekend with four and a half feet of curl, running at about 15 seconds. Uh, again, credit to Jason Broughton and his partner, Darren Grass out of the Highland Curling Club for just ensuring we have a fantastic playing service for these curlers. And it's been great. I've heard compliments from many of the teams saying that it's been just been an excellent ice surface to play on all weekend. Comes down to the face of her own stone. Sits three. Still leaves a bit of a pocket there and a chance for the straight run back on the tight yellow guard. Probably get two moving for sure. Might be able to move all three of them if she hits it just right. Makes the run, does kill two of the red stones, rolls the shooter off the center line, and the ray stone stays in the corner of the 12 foot. What a great shot that was, clearing that center guard out of the way and sticking in the rings. I think you're going to see that corner guard they throw up come into play in this end now. Yeah, sticking around there was big. It forces Kelly Schaefer now to make a play on that stone. So they can't go back to guarding the shot rock. to stay in the rings here does hit right on the nose hangs around for a bite in the 12 foot Tiran's only now will have the chance to play the hit on shot stone and try to roll behind that tight corner guard they threw at the start of the end Makes the hit, unable to get the roll, stays right there. What's the game plan here for Team Ackland? They want to roll away from that corner guard, I would assume. And uh, the idea here would be to force having two of their rocks in the rings. Yeah, I think probably it. You might, if it was down to your last one, look to roll behind just to take a light way a little bit more of the rings. But right now, if you roll behind, only probably plays the short run back and if she sticks it the two is probably in play well they did end up playing for the roll behind and i don't know that might have been a plan b when you realized you weren't going to roll away See it there. That's the view that uh, Sylvana Turian's only will have from the hacks. She's got a couple of inches of air there. There's probably room to at least roll a piece under that guard. Right. 
sweeping for some extra curl, so he's got a little more room than they would have liked. Going to make you know, the hit, but rolls further towards the center. You know, it's been pretty awesome having these female curlers here in Swift Current, and uh, they're just great curlers and even better people. We've had, um, they've been out at all the restaurants. They've attended the WHL hockey games here in Swift. They've been out on the local golf courses, really embracing the city and uh, very good with the residents, with the fans, and just very personable people. So it's been a really ple pleasure to have these these ladies in our city and uh, putting on a show for us here at the Swift Current Curling Club. Sitting in this position, looking to uh, get a little extra sweep for curl. More room now for uh, Alina Pets if she wants to try to roll behind. They would have had to flirt with the guard the last time. This is a little bit uh, more natural way to look at it. Thought they might go to the other turn. This is the turn they've been playing all end. And early on, sweeping for some extra curl. Needs to get past the nose. Wants to roll behind that corner guard if she could. Rolls a couple of inches, but still out in the open. You would have to think that that would be mission accomplished for Team Ackland here in the second end, is to force that one and uh, turn the ha hammer over. You could hit this one right on the nose, stay right there. Uh, Alina Pets wouldn't be able to hit it again without being out of the rings. You could at least force her to draw. You don't expect a miss on a draw at this level, but uh, draw against two, things can happen. Definitely at our level, Sean, you would uh, you would you would think 50-50 on banking on the miss, but uh, yeah, at this level, of these ladies curl at. I wouldn't bank on a miss to the draw on a piece of the eight foot, that's for sure. Well, she drew to the button to get last rock in the first end prior to the game. And if I remember correctly, I was trying to keep an eye on the screen. Uh, I believe this turn she had to throw in the pregame practice. So I would have thrown this shot about half an hour ago. Nice shot uh, just above Silvana Tiranzoni's head. Uh, Victor Kral, who is the national coach in Switzerland now. Many of you may know he was just uh, split up with uh, Jennifer Jones. They cordially went their own ways and uh, he got uh, approached by the Switzerland National Curling Federation to be the, the coach of all the Swiss teams. So excellent coach and a very accomplished coach as well. And Alina Petz puts her final stone in the back of the forefoot. They will pick up their single point with the hammer. Team Ackland will have last rock for the first time when we come back in the third. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares, always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Sean Joyce, Chris Heikert here with you live from the RBC Dominion's Securities Western Showdown. A single point for Sylvana Tiranzoni in the 
second in gives them the one nothing lead. Team Ackland with last rock for the first time here as we begin play in the third. With the first guard or first rock being thrown as a tight center guard. Mackenzie Elias being asked to come around that. Might take this opportunity to give a, a great big thank you to RBC Dominion Securities. They are a wealth management company all across Canada and definitely here in Swift Current. They are major players. Um, it's been great. They jumped on board as the title sponsor of this event. And uh, they've been very pleased with the talented curlers uh, that have been out here. We had a little function Friday night a meet and greet and all the curlers came upstairs and it was nice to mingle with the curlers, mingle with the sponsors. As many of you know, events like this, they just don't happen without the support and partnerships of the local business community. So we thank RBC Dominion Securities and Jim Grundy and his team for making this all happen right here in Swift Current. So nudging that shot stone just a little bit, but it's still the Ackland stone that is shot rock. That shooter rolls out in the open. There's room to make a play on it. Get another one under cover. Or would you prefer to roll away here? Yeah, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. You roll away, that's a great scenario. I think if you roll under the guard, you might see that run back and these ladies are talented enough that run back could make everything disappear so spreading your rocks out might be a good idea makes the hit does roll a little bit to the outside but maybe not far enough to take away the double opportunity Yeah, I think they were looking at rolling that right out into the 12 foot. Carol Howald throwing the second stones here. She was here in Swift Current in 2016 when Swift Current hosted the World Women's Championship. She was here with Team Bina Fletcher. So many of the folks around here remember her from six, seven years ago. And, uh, and again, she's been great visiting, chatting with fans, and being a real good sport. A little thin on that double attempt gives Sarah Oliver a chance to wrap another one around that center guard. You know, you look across the curling sheets this weekend, Sean, and it's just amazing the accomplishments of all these curlers. Uh, Sarah Oliver and Megan Walter there, both world champions in the team mix back in 2019. Kelly Schaefer herself, a three-time Olympian. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, quite humbling to look across the sheet of the ice at all the different countries and just know the accolades many of these curlers have. Slight rub on the come around attempt, leaves that short of the rings. So now a chance for Carol to make a play on the stone out front. See if she can catch shot rock and does remove it from play. So just the two stones in play now, the two guards, one belonging to each team, guarding either side of the forefoot. Question here, Sean. She initially was gonna call the out turn through the hole draw and then she switched out to the wide intern. What would be a possible reason for that? Well, it, the typical thinking, and it depends on the ice, a lot of times you can get it either way, but if you try coming through the port and you leave that rock partially exposed, it would leave the opportunity for Tiran Zoni to hit and roll behind her own corner on the other side. So you come around from the wide side, and if you leave it half open, 
certainly think she can do with roll open or roll out. Excellent shot there by Sarah Oliver wrapping one dead buried around that red one and yeah possibly it could come down to just specific paths in the ice and uh, and knowing the different speeds on the different spots. Yeah it's that's and that's more of a traditional way to think about it that you want to come around from the wide side if you can. A lot of times the ice and the rock conditions that these players get to play on nowadays you come around from the wide side you can overbury anyway and you're still going to leave that that chance to to roll behind the corner so it, it can come down to just personal preference in most cases a lot now we used to play on ice conditions that weren't quite as swingy as as what we play on these days and you never worried about coming out past the guard that is true but you have to remember sean back in the day when you and i curled dinosaurs still roamed the earth so <laughs> Pretty fortunate there. It hung a little wide, a little heavy, but they called a great audible, electing for a little tick off the guard and uh, got it exactly where they wanted that. So a little bit fortunate there, but it definitely does take skill to be able to pick up on plan Bs and plan Cs. You did, I think, uh, caught it in the camera view. Sylvana turn around and say she was sorry. And that's just the great sportsmanship about them, right? Nobody's trying to get lucky, um, but it happens all the time with everyone. So that was just an acknowledgement that she knows she got a little lucky there. Makes the run, but just jams the Yellowstone. Loses the red one at the back, and it's Tiern's only sitting one right now. Did push it out from behind the guard. What would the possible discussion here be? Would this be just which turn they want to play? Ultimately, you'd have to think their goal is to I'm force a single here. <laughs> yeah, it's just the, are they worried about? They initially looked at coming behind their own corner guard, which I thought they would do, and they must be worried about something on this side. Perhaps worried that uh, if they leave this alone, that Megan Walter has room to, to get to that stone that's there and roll under her own guard. The only thing I can think of that they might be worried about on this side. Rushers were on this fairly early. They haven't wanted to get off. Now they've had to sweep, uh, switch sides. They're looking for curl, but they don't want to leave it. Brushers had the right idea on the weight. They had to give it everything they had just to get 12 foot out of it. Chance for Kelly Schaefer to make the hit and roll behind cover. And if you make the hit and roll, you might get the double. Boy, this is really cool. She'll make the hit, drives it by the stone in the rings. Shooter stays right there now. Is it biting? Uh, they'll take a good look at that, at whether it's biting or not, because that will be very important with how the rest of the end possibly plays out. I don't know if they 
boy, to me, it looks like it's probably biting. I don't know that there's much they can do about it, though. You hit it, she's got a, a chance to make a play on Shot Rock. If you hit and roll over to cover it, she can play the freeze on Shot Rock. So I think what they've decided is we better get another one in there first. Alina Pets with her first stone here in the third end. Sweepers again pick this up right out of her hand. Now they have to wait for the line a little bit. Starting to curl, trying to help it over. Actually gets to the inside of her own stone and a little bit of a rub. Turns only sitting two. Megan Walter eyeing up the run back. These Manitoban tuck delivery shooters, I think they love this this tuck delivery, high hard heat, and uh, and they should because they're typically deadly accurate with it. She does have a couple of ways she can make this. Uh, hit it just a shade high and stuff it on the one that was just thrown. Would work if she's just a shade low. She probably puts it in the pocket, makes the double. Nothing out of the brushers early, waiting for this to curl. It's going to need to come up a little bit. That's the hit. And does get it just enough on the high side to stuff it on that yellow and actually rolls over to the top of the button. It's the Aquin team sitting one behind cover on the top of the button. What an excellent shot that was. You know, these teams are getting so good that no longer are they just happy when they run a rock back and make contact with the rock. They're actually playing the hit and rolls with rocks that they're running back. So it just, just goes to show how precise these athletes have become. Alina Petz now with her final stone will look to play the run back red onto red. Try to kill them both and see if she can hold this to a single. She's going to drive it by. Megan Walter, after the nice run back on her first attempt, is going to have the opportunity to try to pick up her deuce here in the third end. Needs a bite on the forefoot. She will have to come between the two guards out front, so maybe not quite the path she threw in the uh, draw to the button. Well, I praised the Manitoban tuck hitter for their hitting ability, but there's two parts to the game and drawing is a part of it too. And they didn't quite tighten up the broom enough to account for that corner guard. It rubs on the way by and they couldn't get quite the same break. Savannah Tierns only got on hers. It'll be a score of one for Team Ackland. We're all tied up after three ends of play. here in for our next event which is going to be the mixed double as you can see there's a few of them there's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles along with a couple of extra little dots but all our logos come from jet ice they are the best logos to put in we use them around the world and they're very easy to install as you can tell this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world this is about a four footer by 10. It's gonna look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in.
tied at one after three ends of play. The first stone here from the Ackland team being brought in as a tight center guard. Tiernan's only asking now for the corner. Team Tiernzoni was able to force that end, and uh, yeah, throughout the tournament, they had a points against per game at uh, four and a half. So on average, they give up four and a half points in a game. So that's that's not very many in an eight-end game. That just shows their force efficiency is great. So that was definitely a missed opportunity for Team Ackland there to get a deuce early in this game. Looks like the corner guard did stop just in time out of the rings. Chris, as this uh, fourth end sets up, I should ask you, uh, this is not, of course, the final event in Swift Current this year. There's going to be another curling stadium of weeks and uh, yeah got some playdown events going on there yeah you're bang on you know what the swift current curling club is just loaded with great events this year and we are very excited to be hosting another western showdown here in swift current it's going to be a battle of the world's best we are headlined by five-time world champion and defending 2022 olympic gold medalist nicholas adine so he's going to be coming down here to the Southwest Saskatchewan, but he's in for some heavy competition. Also coming down here is the defending champion of the Western Showdown last year, Kevin Cooey, who was the 2019 Briar champion. So Cooey will be back to defend his title. Matt Dunstone in his new rank. Colton Flash, the defending Saskatchewan provincial champions. Ten-time Briar participant Steve Laycock three-time Grand Slam champion John Epping. Uh, the list goes on and on. It is just loaded with talent. That'll be here in Swift Current, October 28th to 31st. Email or call the Curling Club if you'd like to make sure you get your hands on some event tickets. If you aren't there for the event in person, all of the action will be available on the Sastel Curling Center. Curling Stadium, pardon me. You know what a treat it's been to have been partnered with Curling Stadium here in Swift Current. Just a great group of people to work with and uh, look at the quality of production of this live stream that they are able to roll out to all the viewers watching all across the world. It's, uh, it's been a privilege to work with those folks and every day they continue to learn and grow with the capabilities and their plan is to continue to give Curling the coverage it deserves and getting the coverage right to you, right into your own home, every single weekend. Looking to sit on the corner there, nudges it just a little bit. Sixth stone of the end about to come now, so there is the option to go after the guard. Speaking of the sixth stone of the end and the guards, I just recently read that uh, the World Curling Federation as a trial is adopting the no tick for an entire game if you're within the first free six rocks of the five rock free guard zone rule. If it's touching the center line, you cannot take it off the center line. And uh, the latest from Curl Canada is that they will be trialing it at the 2023 Scotties and 2023 Briars. No ticks. Makes the run, does kill the one redstone off the top of the eight foot, rolls the shooter off the center line as well. Continues to be Team Ackland sitting shot at the back of the button. Two corner guards belonging to Tiranzoni, and she does have second shot at the top of the four foot. Difficult for Megan Walter to do anything with that stone at the top of the four, though, so they're going to play another guard.
Excellent shot there by Sarah Oliver. Lots of great curl out here on this ice. And again, hats off to head ice technician, Jason Broughton, his partner, Darren Gress, and the entire team we had in Swift Current, ensuring the best curling conditions and playing surface for these athletes all weekend long. It's just, it's been a treat to have these gents putting the pride that they do. Making ice is definitely an artwork and we have some of the best here in Swift Current. All we can do is look to peel the guard. Touches the two corners and puts one of them into the house. The yellow is starting to pile up a little bit on uh, Megan Walters. That was an excellent shot. And you know what? I think they had every intention of doing just that and making sure the roll knocked one of their yellows into the rings. Certainly makes guarding the center situation more and more risky. Kelly Schaefer wondering about playing the double on the two yellows at the left as we look at it, looking into the house. Kelly's been an Guard excellent... Over the top of the one in the 12 foot. She loses the shooter. Across the top does catch the second one. Now will the shooter stick around? Wow, that's fantastic curling shot. She manages to keep the shooter in the 12 foot as well. Kelly Schaefer, as I previously mentioned, she was in Swift Current in 2010 for the Women's Worlds. The first year this city hosted the Women's Worlds. Uh, they walked out of here with a world silver medalist. And uh, she liked this city so much and the people in this city she decided to make this home, and what a treat it's been to have her as a member of the Swift Current Curling Club. Excellent curler, excellent person, and uh, plays a big role here at our club. Taryn's only going to make a play on the open redstone for now. hit now is she going to come across and touch that second stone moves it enough to sit two it will hang on at the back of the 12 foot but uh may not it, it may still be in the way if you tried to make the double it's going to have to go to that stone neat little story about kelly you can see the rbc logo there just to the right of the rbc logo that strapping young man is jared schaefer husband of Kelly, and also advisor with RBC Dominion Securities. I approached Kelly in the summertime and asked her her thoughts of RBC jumping on board and putting on one of the largest international women's curling events in Swift Current. One thing led to another and here we are in the final game. Now, the only thing that would make that story better is if you told me she was, after she thought it was a good idea, if she was going to try to figure out a way to get herself into the final. <laughs> well, I think she got strict instructions from her husband that she was to go out and uh, try to re regain all the money that they had partnered with us to put on the event to cut their losses a little bit. And uh, she has done just that. Excellent shot there by Double. Kelly making the double. Two right now. Kieran's only looking to see if she can answer back here. Makes the hit, does catch the second stone. The shooter will fly as well, so nothing left in play now. Just skip stones to come. I think we've Kieran just seen fourth end. I think we've just seen four doubles, back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back doubles. 
excellent shot making by both these teams. And as a result, we may end up not seeing any more points go on the board this end. Had the opportunity to call uh, Tiran's only semifinal victory, and there were no deuces in that game either. It, it very well could be another game like that in the final where it's going to be very close. One deuce could be huge, so both teams are going to play this a little bit close to the best. Interesting stat to point out here, Sean. Uh, Abby Ackland, Team Abby Ackland, beat Tiran's only. Earlier in the A event, they won six to five, and uh, Team Ackland did not score a deuce the whole game. It was six singles, is what they scored on route to an extra end, six five victory. So, I think you're right. Uh, it might only be the odd deuce here or there that'll be the difference in this curling game. Well, a lot of times, deuces come about as a result of a mistake. You've got two teams here that are playing in the final of the event. They haven't been making many mistakes, obviously or they wouldn't be here. Team Ackland, this is their second or third event, I believe, of the season. They are 14 wins and 10 losses on the curling season this year. Um, Sylvanna Tiranzoni's team, this is their second trip over to Canada this year already. They've played several events and uh, just an excellent record. They've played 38 games with 34 wins and only four losses. So um, pretty tough to the beat this team, but if any team can do it, this team Ackland has already shown it and they're looking to prove it again here in this final championship game. I can't even imagine 38 games. I think I've played <laughs> four and none of them lasted longer than six ends. <laughs> and I still hurt. <laughs> Well, unfortunately for you, Sean, if you just only have to fix your in-turn and your out-turn, and if you did that, you'd finally start making some shots. You might make it six to eight ends. Alina Pats with her final stone here in the fourth end, looking for the blank. And just as she did in the first, makes the hit, rolls it out of play, nothing in play again in the fourth. We've got a blank and we're still tied at one as we go into the fifth. Winner's share here at the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown, $12,000. That's what these two teams are playing for.
here as we begin the fifth end all tied up. We've got two guards to start the end off. <coughs> Sean Joyce with Chris Hiker. Live from Swift Current. Silvana Tiranzoni there. New team, uh, new front end here, and uh, definitely they're doing a lot of curling this year to try to get in the groove, and they've done just that. This is their sixth event they've played in, and of the five previous events, they were qualified in all of them, semi-finalist in one. They lost the final in Martinsville, and then they've went on to win three other events, the Summer Series in Quebec City, the Stu Cells Tankard in Toronto, and the most recent one in North Bay, the Grand Slama Curling Boost National. So they're off to quite the hot season with that 30 and four and four record. Looking for the come around here, a lot of room by the guard. Does come to rest in the eight foot. Buried on the wider of those two guards. Sarah Oliver now being asked to come around from the other side, the out turn. A lot of times you can just say it's the out turn with this team just because they picked up Kelly Schaefer. I have to try to remember who's throwing before I tell them it's the out turn. <laughs> <laughs> we always got to throw one left hander in just that's with the announcer you know over the years there's been some amazing left-handed curlers Keller Schaefer being one of them Mark Kennedy one of the most accomplished curlers in the world Rich Hart playing with Glenn Howard and Mike Harris all those years. Even though they throw from the rock wrong hack, they seem to make a pile of shots. That come around Barry's the top 12 foot, but it's still just second shot. And it looks like there's room here for Kieran's Zoni. If they can come down to their own stone again, would be sitting two. Carol Howell. This time with the intern draw attempt. A little tighter by the guard this time. Were they oh, wait as well? Were they wanting to tap that rock back or just the straight freeze? I think they would have taken either or. I didn't see a specific call for the tap, but I'm working on a small screen here, I must admit. It does give them a little bit more separation by tapping, and if you knew that Megan Walter was going to call the run back and the way this game has been played, you maybe shouldn't be too surprised by this. Well, then the tap is a good result. They're all over looking for the long run back here. It is the lone guard. This is going to overcurl on them just a bit. Catches the yellow out front. Going to move a number of stones around. In the end, it leaves. Tiered's only sitting two. They are open now. And third and fourth belong to Team Ackland. You know, it's neat, Sean, you say, working off a small screen, just to point out how adaptive and interactive this curling stadium is. I believe you're... In your booth in Saskatoon, I'm on site here in Swift Current, but ultimately you can be anywhere around the world and be able to commentate these curling games. Um, very interesting, the potential that Curling Stadium has and they would like to continue to grow. If uh, any of our viewers have any interest 
in commentating for their favorite team, please feel free to re reach out to Jerry Gertz and his team at Curling Zone there. It's neat to see some of the techno technological advancements and uh, to see live streaming from curling uh, games right inside curling clubs all across the world. So the here all seems to be about the fact that those two Yellowstones are open, available for a double. So going to play, I think, a bit of a split on the stone at the top of the eight foot. Try to get the shooter in underneath cover and push that stone back far enough so that there's not a double available off of it. On the brush on this one early. Trying to hold the line, wants to get a piece of that yellow stone at the top of the eight. It's actually going to get onto the red. It does come across and nudge the yellow up. Probably doesn't leave an angle to get all three of them. Megan Walter looking for the double on the two right behind the broom. on the first one but uh, jammed the second one a little solid and we'll leave it for second shot in the corner of the eight foot bit of a bad break there in that uh, where they rolled it to it's also pretty flat for a double if that stops a little bit sooner you might have a double available on your next one shot rock available through the port Tiranzoni and Pets discussing what they can do about that. The Swift Current Curling Club created a bit of a briar patch upstairs where they had close to a dozen TVs and big screen TVs live streaming all the games upstairs in the patch. And uh, throughout the weekend, they also held a Cool Shots curling tournament, shuffleboard curling with the grand prize being free beer for an entire year to the winner of the Cool Shots Curling Tournament upstairs in the in the patch here at the Curling Club. And uh, quite exciting to tell you that not only is she a great curler on the ice, but she's a great curler off the ice in the Cool Shots because Meg Walter won the Cool Shots Tournament so all her friends back home can make sure they ask her, tell her she's buying beer this go around. I just got to wonder, though, Chris, uh, who determines how much beer is a year's worth of beer? Because I feel like if it's the amount you could drink, she may have already won more than she could win for the championship here. <laughs> yeah, I had to uh, call an audible there, depending on who won, just how much beer for a year was actually going to be. But <laughs> I assure you, she's going to be beer for a year, and uh, you want to hit her up for beer. This curling season, she should have plenty of it. I'd, uh... Well, they were looking to hit and roll in towards the middle. That uh, didn't curl for them at all. Makes the hit, does roll towards the edge of the 12 foot, and it continues to be Tiran's only sitting two. Neither one of them is directly undercover, but because of the stagger, they're both a piece undercover, no double available. And 
they're thinking about drawing to the open side. Sit three or coming around. It, it kind of looks like Alina Petz has got the broom down to draw to the corner. Savannah wants to come around the center. And she's won this discussion. <laughs> I should point out on that. Hey, you put this one in a good spot. You you could bring three into play. They can't really see all of either of those yellows. It might be tough to make a double. I should point out that that free beer for a year, Meg Walter actually decided to split it with another fellow by the name of JB from Leader. She split that with the final. So not going home with a car full of half as much as she could have. Looking for the come around here in the fifth end. Gonna have to go to get this by the front. Now does it have the legs to make third shot? Uh, great job by the brushers to get that in for third. Probably a double available in the front too, but the question now is, does it clear those reds on the side? They didn't really look at it that close. Now I see Kelly Sh looking over her shoulder, but this is going to be close to going into that red on the side of the 12 foot. Bringing the heat here in the fifth end. Meg Walter, Skip Stones for Team Abby Ackland. Looking for the double. She actually hits it a little thin and pushes right into that red at the side of the 12. Tiran's only sits three. You know, Chris, I'm just surprised they didn't really look at where that rock was going to go. Certainly expected to hit the first one fuller than that. You'd like to have thought you were going to kill one for sure, but... She could have played the other double, the straight back double, without any risk of, uh, I guess she couldn't see quite enough of the front one, perhaps, to play that. But Team to me, that looked like it was always going into that rock. Team Terenzoni here with the hammer, playing the fifth end and line three. I think you're gonna see a desperation freeze coming on this next shot coming from Team Ackland. I think that's what Team Tiranzoni is thinking as well, and that's the only reason they're looking at playing something around the intern side, just to take away the freeze. Problem is, if you take away the freeze, you leave her the come around on the outturn. Fast forwarding this end, Sean, would uh, would the team out of Switzerland here, would they be happy if they ended up getting a deuce this end? Or, with the way the end is shaping up right now, is that almost a bit of a letdown if you only walk out of here with a deuce? You know, I think the way this game has gone, they'd be happy with two because a two-point lead after five ends in a game that's only three to one, if that's what this, the score happens to be, that's a huge deuce. But... There is certainly an opportunity for more here. I think if she pulls this right into the top of the forefoot, Megan Walter's going to have a hard time not leaving a shot for at least three. You know, she might have to play that freeze you were looking at just to hold them to three. Rushers want to go on this one, but lots of room by the front. They backed away now a little bit, just waiting for a sweep call. Starting to move. They'll get it just far enough in to sit fourth. 
Well, it's uh, it does effectively take away the outturn draw. I think we're going to see plenty of discussion here on this shot. This is possibly the ball game, depending on the outcome of this last shot. So I think there'll be a lot of discussion here. They want to make sure they make the right call and still hang in this game. And it's looking like an intern desperation freeze is about the only shot this team Ackland has here in the fifth end. And that's just to hold them to a shot for two. Although, to be fair, with where she put that last one, her draw for two won't be easy now. She kind of blocked her own path to the forefoot. Even with the perfect freeze here, I think where her, where Alina Petz's last rock ended up, I think you'll see them taking a crack at a short little run back try to put a big number up on that scoreboard and blow this game wide open. I don't know if there'll be a run back, but she might be able to blast it. First things first, Megan Walter needs to make this freeze. Brushers picked it up early. Indication might be that it needs to curl for the brusher closest to the rock is swung around to the other side. Brushers knew when she let it go, they had to be on it. They brought it down all the way, but I think it's still four for Tiranzoni and uh, Lena Pets making her way down to the hacks. Just needs to bite the eight foot here, and she will pick up five big points here in the fifth end. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to Thank the viewers for putting up with me while I tuned in here and tested my luck as a commentator. Uh, they say I definitely have a face for radio, so commentating just might be my gig. But it's been enjoyable here to chat with these viewers and uh, talk curling. This is a little bit of an inside joke between Chris and I, but we might need an abacus to uh, count up the points this end. <laughs> Alina Pets with her final stone, a little bit strong, touches off of her own stone. Does come to rest in time. So they will pick up five big points here in the fifth end of play. They jump out to a six to one lead after five. The Ackland team will have last rock when we come back for the sixth. everyone and welcome to the 2022 Western Showdown, the largest international women's curling event in Canada this season. We're so glad you've decided to join us to see some of the top female curlers in the world participate in this event. My name is Jim Grundy. I'm the branch director of RBC Dominion Securities here in Swift Current. Our branch is not only a huge fan and support of curling in our community, we're so proud to be supporting the Western Showdown for its inaugural year. RBC is committed to working with our community partners to promote and celebrate vibrancy in sport and the communities in which we live. Thank you to everyone from the Western Showdown team for putting together this amazing event. On behalf of RBC, enjoy the tournament. Big five points for Sylvana Tiranzoni in the Fifth end, she now has a six to one lead over Team Ackland. Calls for that first stone into the top of the rings. It slides to the back eight. Megan Walter looking for the corner guard now. A little bit of desperation time now for the Ackland team. After giving up five, they definitely need a multiple count here. 
it would be nice to get three. They're only able to pick up two here. They'll need to steal three over the next two ends just to get to an extra end. That means having to steal a deuce somewhere along the way. Does happen. But I dare say scoring three with last rock happens more often. And if you could get your three, now you're into stealing one at a time. And that's a more manageable situation. So you might see them throw the second corner guard here. Looks like that's the call. And they're going to play the corner guard to the other side. Pardon me, same side. Higher up. Still just the fifth rock of the end, so Sylvana Tiran's only not able to peel those guards. Is going to ask for another one into the middle. You play these rocks into the middle knowing that at some point in time, the Athlon team's going to have to deal with these stones in the middle. While they're doing that, you can clean up the corner. down taps her own stone and puts it in behind the corner guard that they won't be happy with that it gives uh, Walter a, a stone they to behind cover guard. Wants to just sit on top of that yellow stone for now. Comes down, nudges it back a little bit. It is still stone belonging to Tiranzoni that shot rock. Wasn't critical to have shot yet just yet. You know that uh, Tiranzoni is going to start peeling guards. Stagger on those two guards. Tiranzoni opts to peel the one closer to the rings. Three. Three. Team Acklin looking to put the uh, tight corner back. Sweeping to try to get this underneath that longer corner guard. They'd like them to have to peel the long one. Ends up in about the same spot. Lena Pets, I think, eyeing up the uh, double peel over the top and maybe come back and disturb things in the house. Savannah opting for that same peel though. Just take the closer guard. Giving up two points here doesn't uh, upset Tears only. She just wants to be careful not to give up any chance for three. She's content to peel one guard at a time. the peel. The shooter comes across the top of everything else. Out of play. 
for Megan Walter, if you're going to think about trying to get three, you might have to start coming in now. And where can you put this stone? The Tyrants only can't make a play on it. I talked about freezing the back one. Great call, but it's tough to get there. corner of their eyes that uh, winner's check which right now looks like it might be slipping away on these this Ackland team so it looks like they're going to come towards the corner again but I didn't see if they wanted to play just another straight guard or if they're going to try to bury this one it would be tempting to bury this top eight foot even if you're only fourth shot from the brushers. She's a tight guard, maybe into the 12 foot. They're waiting for a line call. Needs to get this under cover. Looks like they decided to play the guard all the way. They might have been able to get that into the rings. Doesn't really protect the redstone in the rings. Now it is protected from the back. Hard to get it out. Kieran Zoni might be happy to get rid of that yellow one right now. It's going to be a team discussion anyway. Just looking at where some of them are touching the, the ice. I'm, there might be some discussion that if you can't remove that red guard or that redstone at the top of the forehoot, maybe a guard the situation. But they want the guard wide enough that they can run it back if uh, Megan Walter makes some kind of an in off off that yellow on the left hand side. First shot they discussed was to play the red onto the yellow, try to sit in front of it, lose that yellow back one. And Savannah seems to keep coming back to that one. For Tyrion's only, it really boils down to this. There isn't a way she can get that redstone out of the top of the eight foot right now. She needs two shots to get it out. So she's going to play the first one here. Because if you don't... here And Megan Walter finds a place to put her next one where you can't get at it either. Suddenly three is in play. So as long as you remove that back yellow so that you can get the red out on your next one, you're not looking at any more than two. the hit leaves her shooter right there so she's got that same angle to run the red through the next time
Megan Walters first. Have to guard that and just make sure we've got a chance for two here. And it doesn't look like Kelly Schaefer sees anything else, so that's what they're going to play. Rushers had picked this up early, indicating it might be a little bit higher, a halfway guard. Does the job. Alina Pets now going to look to make a play on that guard. Didn't see the indication whether they're going to try to run this straight back. Kill the two reds or over the top of the red guard. That's a little dangerous. You could slice it back into the rings. Did catch the guard at the front uh, by spilling it back into the 12. That stone is still covered, but it is a short run back if she wanted to try the double. Megan Walter looking at the draw. Here first of all, but I think she might want to look at hitting the back one. If you hit the back one, there is a double available on the top two yellows. She's looking at freezing the back one. That can work too, same idea. You're hoping when you freeze to the back one, Alina Pets will try to remove it, lose your shooter, and you might have the double at the top to sit three. Kelly Schaefer wondering about maybe playing it now. Concern is whether or not you'd leave a triple. Megan Walter going to make her way back down to the house end and, and take a look at the angles. You make that double here, Alina Pets will have some kind of double back, but there's always the chance that that... Uh, could jam on the stone at the back. I think they've decided to give it a go. Looks like she needs about half a rock, maybe even a thin half on the first one. She has to get directly into the side of the second one, make sure she pushes it over the top of the red. I 
Megan Walter with her first stone here in end number six. Makes the hit, comes across. Actually just underneath the yellow and into her own stone, kills it. And in so doing, probably left shot stone partially exposed. Maybe enough available now for Alina Pets to pick it out. And it's just been that kind of an afternoon for Megan Walter. Just needed to hit that first stone a little bit thicker. If she could have come across and made the double, could have made things interesting here. Alina Pets, this one curling on the early. She's got to get by the stone at the top of the 12. Great job by the brushers to hold that. She does get by, picks it out, and Tiran's only sits two. No double available. So Megan Walter will have to try to draw, take her single here. Final stone on its way, Megan Walter, and this one is picked right out of her hands. Brushers pick it up early, but it's got no chance. Left to scratch behind her, it's going to be another steal of two for Sylvana Tiranzoni, and uh, we've got the fist bumps have come out. Sylvana Tiranzoni will be the champions this year at the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. Goes into the books as an 8-1 to one final, an outstanding event for the Tiran's only team and the Aquan team for having a throw together team has to hold their head high as well. My broadcast partner has already made his way down to ice level. We will hang around here. Check presentation. Here's only force them had a solid day today. Of course, three games for both of these teams. I have the opportunity to call their semifinal. They have played very well all day today. Full credit for this victory and uh, what a strong end they played in end number five to put pressure on when they needed it. We're just waiting for everybody to get into position. Players are happy to gather around that great big giant check. Sylvana Tiranzoni, this year's champion at the RBC Dominion Securities Western Showdown. Sastel Curling Stadium and CBC Gem want to thank you for joining us with for all of the coverage beginning Thursday. It's been an outstanding event. We've got more events for you yet to come this season. 
on behalf of myself, Sean Joyce, my broadcast partner this afternoon, Chris Hiker, and the many, many other commentators, producers, and announcers that we've had, we want to thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event.